Good morning. Uh, I'm Jonathan, and I'm here to help you work better on the internet and help give people more freedom and accountability. Today is March 18th, 2020, and this is the daily Q&A talking about ways we can work better together um, during these very interesting times we're in. So today's question comes from Becky again, uh, same person as yesterday, and she asks... Some project management roles struggle with developers' passive communication and are asking for more status updates, like setting your Slack status to sandwich when you're at lunch or checking in before closing up for the day, which has the potential to become disruptive or generally annoying. Any advice for either of these? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, there's a few things going on here. So my, my first question is, what is the need behind the request? Um, what is it that the that the project managers are feeling or sensing that they think requires the developers to 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 be more responsive? Um, is there actually harm? And um, one thing you can do is you can have the um, you can ask the the PMs to describe like 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 ask them like talk to them about like, you know what's what's their concern and what's going on sort of behind that. My hunch is that it's sort of a sort of a, a desire for control, and there's, there's actually a lack of trust. Um, now, you can't just make people trust each other, but what you can do is put more structures in place to support people getting the information they need to feel uh, safe, like like they, like they can work well together. One way to do that is let's see, I've got a list here. Um, one thing you can do is you can help the developers sort of internalize the the needs of the PMs, so. Have a conversation, uh, have a meeting. This can be done in a retrospective. Hopefully you're doing retros and you have some sort of PM representation at those. Um, and find out if you can get the developers to resonate with the need for more communication, then they'll just change their behavior naturally. Um, I think it's really, really potentially unsafe and damaging to have the developers feel like there's someone breathing over their shoulder. Uh, so you want to avoid that. So it might be that either either you help the developers understand the importance of that of of talking of being more responsive, or you help the PMs understand that the developers need space to work. Um, one of the big concepts here is the idea of. Let's just get this going here. Um, one of the big concepts here is the idea of um, maker space maker time versus manager time. And there's actually an article that goes all the way back to 2009, Paul Graham, uh, and he talks about maker time and manager time. And um, in this article, he says that uh, the way that managers experience, the way a manager's day is full of communication and meetings. A developer's day needs to be full of large blocks of uninterrupted time. And even the threat of interruption can, uh, can throw a developer off. So... If you can help the PMs understand that there's actually a big cost for having a developer be available all the time, um, that can really help. And you can look up the research. There's research that says that it takes like, I don't know, 25 minutes or something for a person to get back into flow state after being interrupted. Um, so there's actually it's actually really harmful to, to, to be interrupting a developer periodically um, or even to have the threat of interruption there. Um, now, if you're doing stand-ups, uh, and the, the PMs are seeing that the developers are getting stuff done, that's great. Um, that, that really can help uh, ease their fears. Um, but I think, the, I think the big opportunity here is to help the PMs understand that developers need large blocks of time. Now, you could also have them uh, try to create a standard where people check in two or three times a day. I think that's plenty. Um, and in that way, the PMs know they can count on uh, the developers to be available for questions at a certain time of day, to do check-ins, um, but you want to avoid it being a situation where you're doing the check-ins in order to, I don't want to say dominate, but like um, you don't want the check-ins to be a thing that enforces a parent-child relationship, which is probably already present. Um, so that's a lot of this stuff goes much deeper into the culture of the, of the organization, and we can't address that all at once. Uh, or in a five minute, you know, YouTube video, um, but get it out in the open and and get people sort of present to the tension, 
And if you can, normalize the idea that there are going to be tensions in organizations, right? There's, there's, there's always things that could be improved or changed, and people are always going to have different perspectives. And those tensions are valuable. I'll leave a link down below uh, to a little clip about tensions that, that you can watch. And I use the word tension and concern interchangeably. Um, so that's one thing. You can also have the PMs keep a list of the agenda items, keep a list of the topics that they want to discuss with each developer, and also a list of topics to discuss at Retro. And basically, uh, each person should be tracking a list of topics to discuss with each person that they want to talk to. Uh, this, is co this comes from David Allen, GTD. And the idea is that if you have lists of your topics to talk with different people, whenever you see them, you can bring up those topics and go through them. Um, and that way you're not needing uh, you're not needing people to be available as much. You, you know that when I see this person, I can count on myself to bring up the things I need to bring up. So using um, doing a little bit of training around GTD, and I can help you with that, uh, will help a lot. Um, and getting people in the habit of writing down their, their, their tensions or their concerns as they come up, and then also putting in the person who they need to talk to, and then being able to sort on that in some sort of a list system. It doesn't have to be fancy. But being able to say, oh, I've got five minutes with Joe. Here's my three things I need to talk about. And then when you're with that person, they really appreciate you being able to knock through those items, you know, one, two, three. Um, and then if you can create a role or some sort of forum or space, facilitated space, to track any issue related to development, and usually this is what a retrospective is for, that's a good place to help surface this stuff. Um, the best thing you can do is maintain a lot of maintain a lot of respect for the people in the group and um, do have plenty of communication, but really get people to respect each other's autonomy and freedom and the importance of that. Um, and this article about uh, the, the maker schedule and the um, manager schedule should help a lot. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Uh, this is a quick one and I'll try to do these every day. Uh, please, if you have any questions, please post them below. I love answering these and it helps everyone out a lot. Please share this video and drop a like. Uh, that's how we get it out to more people. Um, we're all in this together. It's only day two and we got weeks, potentially months of um, this new way of working. So uh, it's my wish that you are happy and productive and effective. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.